So when something isn't going right, uh, how does that come to your attention and, and what do you do? Uh, and maybe alternatively, uh, tell us the story of an unhappy customer and what you did about it. Uh, I can take the second one. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I can do the first one. We, 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 have a, uh, we have a series of daily reports the CS team and it's really, it's sometimes going to be challenging to filter the signal from the noise and that stuff. So it's, it's uh, a combination of looking at the stats that break and, and anecdotal. But uh, uh, one good example of, of, obviously people invest a lot in our kind of game. Um, and so when they quit, uh, there's a you know, the term rage quit. Um, you hear. So like it's, eventually it just becomes too much. And, and one of the things that we do a lot of is when people quit the game, we reach out to them and we try and maintain a relationship with them. So, so uh, a couple of, on a couple of occasions we've had event, influential players who invested a lot over six months to play the game and eventually leave and we, we keep in touch with them and, and it pays off in ways that, that uh, we didn't really understand but when we launched our alpha for our next game we were able to reach out to people who had actually churned um, from Samurai Siege for one reason or another um, and introduce them to the next game and, and continue that conversation. We had a, a remarkable number of those people come back and try the next game and, and we realized that it's it's less about uh, people people just move on from games and there were heads that you remember them. They were touched that we remember them and and, and and yeah they they you know people move around from games and they, they value the, the, the idea that, that we're listening to them and and, and uh, it helped that a lot of the things that we were doing in the next game fixed some of the issues that caused people to leave in the first one. So um, yeah, so that was that was something that worked really well. It's tough, um, it's hard to do, but uh, uh, it was worth it for us. Yeah, I think for us, you know, we try to uh, to catch stuff as early as possible. We have uh, also daily reports that get emailed out. We have uh, dashboards around the studio that uh, that show various things. Uh, we tend to try and watch uh, the numbers, crash rates, those sorts of things, really closely when we're rolling out updates. Uh, we've uh, we're doing that in a very staggered way using uh, the Google Play functionality is, is really good at doing that. Um, but o over the last year in particular we've become a lot better at uh, you know, looking at early reviews and uh, customer support and, and leveraging those channels uh, as kind of the canary in the coal mine uh, as well to see whether we've done something really wrong that isn't necessarily obvious in the numbers straight away. Um, we try not to be too reactionary to that, but uh, if, if our users are reacting strongly, either positively or negatively, uh, to something that we've done, uh, you know, we, we take that into consideration and counsel on that uh, very quickly to, to see whether we're doing the right thing, whether the community is just reacting as we expect, but you know, it's the, the early adopters who tend to be the most vocal. So, uh, you know, we try, we try to be as responsive as we possibly can. One of the things we really focus on is uh, the percentage of uh, five, stars, five star reviews we have in our application. And we kind of look at this as a, a form of social proof that our application is well liked within the market. Um, and one of the things that we do is we provide weekly reports to the team uh, on complaints that people are talking about um, within the game. It's, it's typically about specific levels. And then we feed, that, um, we feed the, uh, those reviews to our product team uh, to try to fix those levels or, or, or make those levels more fun. Um, and that's one thing that we do uh, pretty easily um, that's pretty effective. Um, problems are inevitable, and as a result of that, we've moved towards a process where every time we launch an update, it's always in the morning, before noon, and it's, it's never on a Friday. And so, right when we launch that update, within 15 minutes, we'll know if there's a problem. Um, because our players start telling us just via customer support, you know, via the app. And our customer support team will let us know and we'll, we'll have time to try solving it. Um, another really important thing to do is when you do have a problem, is to just acknowledge it. I think a lot of times players, they just want to hear something from your company. And an example of that is, you know, I was on our forums um, just this past weekend. And we had a problem a couple weeks ago where um, we had a bug and it only affected Apple players. And basically this bug gave them a lot of free things that we were planning to charge them for. Uh, so people on Kindles and Android devices were complaining that it wasn't fair. And what's worse is they were complaining that, you know, how come Pixelberry isn't saying anything to us? Because usually you, you talk to us. And it was some of our most avid active players. And so I went on there and just responded to them and I 
kind of, I tried to be very transparent about what had happened, why in this particular case we weren't going to give anyone you know, premium currency as an apology um, because we had made a mistake for another platform and just let them know that you know, we're trying really hard. And that was enough for them. They said, you know, thanks for taking the time. You know, it makes us feel a lot better that we know you're listening and that you care.